He is South Africa's most loved news anchor, having been in our homes every evening for so many years. Her famous sign-off was recited by many people of all ages for decades on end. Mam Notkolo Khrotboom contributed to the Isikosa News at the Public Broadcasters. Uh, once getting off the screen, she contributed editorially, honing in young skills in the broadcasting space. It's now 37 years of presence. Grace and her infectious personality, Mam Notolo, will be retiring from news broadcasting. Her contribution to the Isikosa News will be forever admired. Next week, she'll be reading her last bulletin at the Public Broadcaster. And we are fortunate enough to be talking to her before that. She joins us in studio. Can you believe it? Um, wow, Mam Notolo Khrudboom. As I was reading my headlines, I made sure that I read them to the best of my ability because you're sitting here <laughs> and uh, I don't want any scrutiny. <laughs> so, Bona Mama, how are you? Molo, 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 danam. And the all is well. I'm not complaining. And how are you? We are fantastic and deeply honored, Bushe, uh, as, as Mam Khrudboom is here in studio. Mm. You, your work, your work speaks for itself. I mean, you were on, on, on air and uh, pushing towards a career before we were even born, mm. we'll say. Um, you started off as a typist at the SABC, but you clearly had a vision. You know, um, yes, I started off as a typist. I wouldn't say clearly had a vision. All I needed then, because of circumstances, was a job. I desperately needed a job. And I said, um, I will take anything that the SABC offers. And when uh, the opportunity of the typist job came up, I said, no maganja, again. And uh, it was then when I was, you know, within the corporation that I said, you know, this typist job is definitely going to open doors for me. And it did, um, I'm not calling. We, we're very happy that you, you took any job that you could find uh, and got into the door. But let's talk about where it all started, even before the job, you know. Uh, where, where did you grow up? Uh, where were you born? And, and, and who is Umam Nokolo Khrutbom? What makes you tick? Um, I, I was born in a small town in the Eastern Cape called Lady Frey. But I was brought up by my parents in Fort Beaufort, a hill down, a Lalim that is called Chajoha. I'm sure you know the famous school hill town. Mm. I was brought up by my grandparents. Um, I am Nokolo Jelese. That's my maiden name. Khwedbom is, is my married name. So I grew up there. In, in, in Fort Beaufort, brought up by my parents, by my grandparents on my mother's side. One would be surprised just by looking at you that you're talking about retirement. Surely, <laughs> I mean, you could be 40, you could be 38, you could be 35. Um, you've carried yourself in the most gracious manner going into our homes. Um, you know, making it an aspiration for, for some of us watching you to want to be in your seat. And perhaps, you know, your, your upbringing and, and the manner in which you, you wanted to, to, to really make great strides in your life has, has changed the lives of so many people, not just the people that you were reading news to, but the people that um, were yet to meet you, like ourselves. Talk to us about your, your, your journey, your, your journey as soon as you made the decision, as you came into the SABC and you were a typist, and then you thought to yourself, no, Maganjani, I'm going to make this work. I think it was about three years after joining the SABC that uh, during lunchtime, I accidentally met Uko Limazibuko. May his soul rest in peace. Uko Limazibuko then was working for a, a current affairs program as a Mateni Takangwaha. And he just said to me, Hi Manukolo, we've, we've got a post in the office. Um, 
our boss is looking for a secretary. Please, man, come and work with us. Come and join us. I was like, okay, tell me more about your program. And then he started telling me more about SAPC, uh, and I was like, oh, storytelling, in-depth programs. Okay, all right. Let me go and be a secretary. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll tell stories. Mm -hmm. So I joined uh, that department, and uh, I would watch them do their work. Because I know I can tell stories. Mm. And it happened one day that our anchor, yes, Tosa, Mkokeli Tanda, was not available. I think he was off sick. And it was time to record the program. And the guys were like, Asina present, Asisen Lakini, Mkokeli Tanda is not around. And then my my boss was like, cool, so what's your problem? I have a closer in my office. RN. And that's how I got into, you know, presenting. I remember that day clearly. I was not, like, dressed for going on air because I was not, I was just, you know, informally dressed. I remember I had a a black and blue striped top. I had a duke, you know, on. And they said, into the studio. It was just powder and lipstick. Mm. And I presented the program. Storytelling. In Zomi, it's things that are indigenous with African tradition, African culture. Where do you discover your love for storytelling? You know... When I grew up um, at Ajoka, a football fort, you remember I told you that I was brought up by my grandparents on my mother's side. You know, I remember very well in the evenings, we used to have sessions, book reading sessions. You know, uh, my grandmother would choose Inuat yes, Kosa, and our aunt Usisnoma Zocho, not Josie, would be the one to read the book, you know, switch off everything, no radio, nothing. And Usis Noma Zocho would sit there, would read this book, and I would, like, listen to her. And, you know, I would say to myself, one day I would love to read like Usis Noma Zocho, you know. Mm. And I would practice, you know, not like practice reading, mm. like imitate what she was saying, you know. And I remember a Sunday school. I, I, I had a Sunday school teacher, Mr. Mdlalo. And Mr. Mdlalo, I was, I was very young then, I was six years old, and the older Sunday school class was given verses to read for a competition. And I went to him and I said, yo, where's my verse? And you said, no, 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 no. It's for Abantu Abadala, you know, Abadala. I said, no, I want my verse too. I want my verse too. And he gave me my verse to read. And I recited that verse. Guess what? I got the first prize. <laughs> wow. There's always something so incredible about working in a newsroom. It essentially forces you to, to, to go into so much depth into understanding the manner in which you write, the way you articulate your words. And Isikosa is a rich language. There's a lot of metaphors in the language. And as soon as you go on air and you read the news, even for myself, not being uh, a person or one Kosa, mm. I'm able to, to be gripped by, it's almost like poetry. How do you, how do you pre present, it, present the news in that way where, where you reach me, even though, I don't really understand the language, but I'm still able to hear you. You know, I always treated uh, news stories when I was reading them differently. No news story is the same mm. to the other. And that, that shows, that should show in the way you deliver the story. You know? And if you are reading about someone who is no more, 
You cannot read that with a smile. You must bring emotions into the story. You know, but if you're talking about Orlando Pirates trashing Kaiser Chiefs, you know? I, I would be reading that with a, with a cry, with a, <laughs> with a face. Well, <laughs> you, you, you must show in the way you present the story that now it's a different story. It's a sport, you know? And even if it's a story about entertainment, people must see in your face that you are now entertaining them. So I think I, 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 I got... To, to engage myself and feel the stories I, I, in that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I respected each and every story that I read, and I treated it, you know, the way it deserves. Mm. You know, you only seem so composed. You're very elegant. But you say that you put yourself essentially in the story that you read. Talk to us about some of the stories that have moved you the most. You know, for me, I remember watching you read about that Mandela, uh, when the former president Nelson Mandela passed away, and that that moved a lot of us at home. But what what stories moved you? You know, I'm not going to mention his name, but there's a story that I had to read that no one knew how close that story it was to me. Mm. It was about my father's brother being arrested. You know, during, you know, those political upheavals in the trans sky. And during that time, the family wasn't sure whether he was well or, you know, they didn't know anything about his well-being. And there I was having to read that story, watch him, you know, being paraded looking at him, I know him, you know, he's this bubbly person, and he looked like a shadow of himself, but I had to sit there, convincingly tell the story to the viewers, as if that story was not, you know, close to my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you have to take your emotions away from the story sometimes, as I had to do that, that, that day. It was the most challenging read that I had to do. I suppose, I mean, that's also the art of, of being a news anchor, where you, you learn to separate yourself from the story, even though it's so emotionally charged, but you have to remain composed. And, and these are skills that, that are learned over, over many years. Over many years, yes. Yeah. In fact, even during um, the, 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 the funeral, Yaga Krisani, I didn't want to do that story, you know. I didn't want to go and be part of the live broadcast because, I mean, I saw what happened. I, I, I held uh, Umdanawake. I tried to console Umdanawake. I saw Comrade Krisani, Elele, Pa, Uyebona Londoleyo, helplessly. You know, and, and I, I, I know how this man lives. I remembered in Lela, our Shekangayo, his laughter would be heard right across to my house, you know. And there I was having to pretend, Ubuti, you know, this is a story mm. that you mm. have to present to the nation. This is the death of Krisani, as if Krisani was just another newsmaker mm. of which it wasn't. But I had to do it. Absolutely. We, we actually have a special message from someone who, who worked uh, with you um, and, uh, you know, for many years, journalist and news anchor, Avuyo Mvoko, who has a message for you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he's on the line and joins us now and wants to, to say some words for you. Um, uh, hi, good morning. Um, Mum Frotboom is, is listening and quite surprised uh, that you're on the line, Avuyo. How are you? A very good morning to all of you and to Smokolo especially. You know, I first met her uh, in uh, 2002 when I first, uh, but face to face that is. Um, that's when I joined the SABC as group political editor. I mean, the love, warmth, and support that that icon gave me was just incredible. It was out of this world. I mean, the politics team at the time wasn't big. 
funding for the responsibility we had of servicing three TV channels and about 18 radio stations. So often I had to go out there myself and report. And the requirement at the SABC is that um, you write your script in English so that others can translate in their languages, and then you package in both English and your own language, as she would tell you. She was on speed dial. Because I knew that people like her were listening to what I would say, how I would approach those stories. I would ask her, how do I say this so that it doesn't sound like a direct translation from English to his torso? Because, as she said, you had to treat the stories differently, not only in terms of whether you were sad or you were happy, but you give your a language it's the respect that you give to English. And Sis Motola throughout the years, and when people started like showering me with praises about how eloquent I was in this course or how good uh, my scripts were, no one knew that she was on speed dial. She was, I mean, all the time, she said, any time, any time. I would call her and say, and she would but she would give me all the advice and as lastly and more importantly i mean i had over the years at the sabc i had responsibility of doing a, a, a number of major broadcasts that the sabc has ever done and sis Nokolo, left me with so much memory that I have cherished to this day and will continue to do uh, for the rest of my life. We did a couple together, but of course the one that really stands out was when I had to sit next to that icon um, in our main makeshift studio uh, in a village in the Trans Sky to broadcast the funeral service of Utada Unelson Mandela. Mm, mm. And she held me by the hand because she had the experience, because she could carry the broadcast in a way that no one that I had ever worked with could. And for that, I am grateful to her. People remember that funeral um, because of what we're able to do, because of things that only her, only she could impart to people like me and enable someone like me to carry a funeral of that magnitude. And that is something I will cherish forever and something I will never forget. Buyo, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, for, for sharing that uh, with us, uh, Buyo Mboko, of course, speaking about you, um, Mam Nongkolo, and, and this is something that has really taken you down memory lane as you listened to each and every word. You know, you know yesterday evening, I was, I was talking with a uh, uh, minister, Ustela, and I said exactly what Fuyo said. And I was saying to her, you know, one of the best people that I worked with as a team when we were doing these live broadcasts I'm Nicola, is I'm, Fuyo. I'm so sorry. I, I'm, I'm just going to ask you to keep that for a moment. We just need to take a short break. We'll be back. Stay tuned. The legendary news anchor, Nokolo Kretbrum, in studio. <laughs>
Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on the AM edition of Newsfeed, where we continue our conversation with legendary news anchor Mam Nokolo Um Mam Nokolo, before we took the break, uh, Vuyo Mvoko was on the line speaking about you, speaking mm -hmm. about the person we didn't know behind the scenes. We, we see you gracious on television, but behind the scenes, you were also a mentor. You, you, you helped um, many journalists, uh, you know, make it to, to the forefront when it comes to their careers. That's how it's supposed to be. You know, there is nothing unique that I did. You know, I am from a generation of naturals at the SABC. That is why, how I became who I am. I'm not a professional journalist. I never studied journalism, but I was nurtured. When I got to the SABC, as we said in the beginning, I was a mere typist, you know. But when I started joining the news team, everybody held my hand and took me through the paces until I became who I am. Then who am I? It's not, I mean, that's all I know, nurturing, being nurtured, mm. you know. Mm. So that, 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 that simply came very easy for me to do to others. Mm. You say you were part of uh, that generation. You've seen many generations at the SBC come and go. Uh, there was a time you almost came and went as well. Can you talk to us about the height of your frustrations with, uh, with working at the public broadcaster? Um, I'm going to disagree with you when it comes to that. I, I don't remember a single day where I can say I was so frustrated to an extent that I wanted to go. Because news was my baby. And who leaves a baby behind? You know, SABC News is where I became known as the person that I am today. And I think uh, the kind of loyalty that I had to that organization was insane, <laughs> you know, because I developed a thick skin, you know, and anything that would presumably frustrate me mm -hmm. would strengthen me, you know. And news was news to me, and, and especially because... It was our language that I was dealing with, Isikosa, you know. And you couldn't find Isikosa anywhere except a SABC, mm. you know. And I saw that as a platform to build and develop Isikosa, you know, and make sure Uguti, Ongo Siam, Ababantuana Bangin Bakulayo, Mabayaz Kosa, you know, and, and try and be passionate and respect language yabo and no ukuti is a course i can take them somewhere one day standing and sitting behind uh, the news desk as you read the news on television you know we as as we listen to you quite deeply we we see that it was more than just a job no it was it was more than that. it was a calling it was you can definitely say that you can definitely say in <laughs> You can definitely say in Duaso because yo, it was my it was my life. You know, I lived I lived is a course. Mm. I lived my job. I loved my job. I was so passionate about that job, especially when I saw in the Yokobana, you know, we are cooler, um sedens way too. Mm. Eswenza, your ASAPC in promoting a language as course. And when, when the younger ones, you know, started joining us, you know, it became more exciting because Indo Ibisiti Gum Nangisa Nangisa before your time runs out. You know, your catchphrase, and, and I'm not going to say it because I'll never sound as good as you say yeah. it. So please, please do say it uh, before answering this question. But your catchphrase showed that your love came through. It was felt in the homes. I mean, I vividly remember 
sitting watching you, and my grandmother would always say, Nati Seaktan, why did you choose that catchphrase? It is because of the outpouring of love and appreciation that I received from viewers wherever I go, wherever I moved, wherever I was. It's like unimaginable. Mm. It's something that I never anticipated, even from, from the young ones, mm. you know. And I thought to myself, I cannot reach them all. Why not use the platform? We'd like you to, to, to face the camera too. I hope the bosses aren't watching because I still want to keep my job here. But um, <laughs> as, you, as you say, your, your sign out, your famous mm -hmm. sign out, um, there's camera too for you. To go with that, uh, can you also just you know, share a, a message with the country as well uh, you know, a, a, as we bid farewell to a broadcasting legend? Kubobonke uh, Ababukeni Nabata and Dibendaba Abate banditata, Guyo Yonke Leminyaka, Diguelis Golo Sasazo, Mandibeka, Gwinda O Ebanzi, Difuna Uguti Kubo, Mazenetol, Dingumdu Otetaka Kul, Godwa Namsange, Apele Lip Gandhi, Godwa Noko Gunjalo, Difuna Uguti Gun, Galo Longke Ikresha, Nisia Kubeka in Toko, Nanga. Ningalala nombete ingubo ye mvisi suano ukolo no tando. Dinitanda no nke makai. Nati Siaktan. Nati Siaktan, I'm no kolo Thank you beautiful. so much uh, for, for coming out and, and wow. sharing your experiences. What an incredible, incredible um, conversation we had with mm. you. Thank you so much for um, you know staying in our homes mm, that's a 37 years close to four decades I mean you should have stayed for other three <laughs> you really should have <laughs> what an honor thank you absolutely the My epitome pleasure. of, of, of news broadcasting and we still look at your your the lights that you have shone and we hope to emulate just to come anywhere close to the amazingness that you have achieved over your career all the best to you too guys thank you so much um, there you have it. Legendary news anchor, Mamno Kolo um, speaking about the journey, sharing her experiences on and off air. And, and, and you heard now the reasons why she would tell us all in our homes, mm. in our lounges, wherever we were. Uguti Ustanda Nong, Songke, Makai. Now I'm exposing my bad Um Yeah. Yeah. It brings us to the end. Isn't it? it does, and what a way to end the show. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. It has been an absolute pleasure. and.